Hello, in this video I want to discuss uh, the concavity of a graph and how, to, uh, how that relates to the second derivative and also how it relates to finding maxes and mins. Um, so for starters, uh, concavity just in at the most basic level is whether the graph is a kind of cupping upward or whether it's cupping downward. Uh, there's always a change point. This is called an inflection point. An inflection point is where we change concavity, where we go from this is concave down, this is concave up. Um, something to notice that if you happen to have extrema, uh, if this is a critical point, uh, if, a, if a critical point is in the midst of a concave up section, then that makes it a min. And if you have a critical point right here, in a concave down section of the graph, that must be a max. So just kind of keep that in mind as we go forward. An inflection point in concavity is, is determined by the second derivative. Uh, if the second derivative equals zero, then you have an inflection point. So this right here is where the second derivative equals zero. If the graph is concave up, the second derivative is positive. And here, if it's concave down, the second derivative is negative. So just a kind of some uh, very basics about how we're going to determine uh, the concavity of the graph. Uh, I want to use uh, a pretty basic example to kind of start um, talking about this. Uh, we're going to do 4x cubed plus 21x squared plus 36x plus 20. And the first thing I want to do is I'm going to take the first derivative and identify the critical points. 12x squared plus 42x plus 36 equals 0. Um, and uh, if I'm trying to factor this, it'd be smart to just divide by 6 everywhere. So we really have 2x squared plus 7x plus 6 uh, equals uh, 0. And uh, now <clears throat> to actually factor this uh, completely, uh, I like to do a little trick over here, factoring, pretend, multiply 2 times 6, pretend you have x squared plus 7x plus 12. Uh, that easily factors to x plus 3 and x plus 4. But remember, you multiplied by this by 2, so now you have to go back and divide by 2. If it works out to be a nice whole number, you keep it. And if not, it comes up front. So this is 2x plus 3 times x plus 2 equals 0. So my critical points here are x equals negative 3 halves and negative 2. Um, so let's uh, go ahead and just put this on a number line before we talk about the second derivative and determine if we have maxes or mins here. Uh, we're going to have y prime, and uh, this will be x. And uh, let's, uh, this is negative 3 halves and negative 2. So let's, uh, uh, maybe this can be like uh, negative 2 negative 3 halves, maybe a 0 out there, maybe a negative 4 right there. <clears throat> we know that critical points mean that the second, the first derivative is 0 there and 0 there. Uh, so I need to investigate this interval, this interval, and this interval to see kind of what is happening in those three uh, segments, and that'll help me know if we have a max or a min. Um, so a number, first of all, to the right of negative 3 halves, maybe 0, plugged in, uh, here, here, and here, you just are left with the 20. So this is a positive region. Uh, a number below negative 2, perhaps just a negative 3. Uh, put that in here, you get a negative 3 plus 2 is a negative. This would be a negative 6 plus 3 is a negative. Two negatives multiplied together. That's a positive segment. 
And uh, what's between uh, negative 3 halves and negative 2? Perhaps negative 1.75, for example. If you put that in here, 2 times negative 1.75 is negative 3.5. Add that to 3, you get a negative. Uh, negative 1.75 plus 2 is positive. Negative times positive is a negative. So what's going on here is our graph goes up, then it goes down, then it goes up. So it goes up and then down and then up. That's the situation. Increasing stops at negative 2. Decreasing stops at negative 3 half, then increases and onward. So negative 2 ought to be a max and negative 3 halves ought to be a min. So we're going to now go to the second derivative and try and confirm this with the inflection point in the intervals where the graph has concavity up and down. Okay. I'm going to write down my function one more time, and we'll get the second derivative this time. Get my paper in position. Uh, so once again, <clears throat> y equals 4x cubed plus 21x squared plus 36x plus 20. Uh, we did the first derivative already. 12x squared plus 42x plus 36. The second derivative is 24x plus 42. And if that equals 0, we will find our inflection point. So you would have to take 42 away, divide by 24. Uh, your inflection point is going to be x equals negative 42 over 24, or simply if you divide by 6, minus 7 fourths. Um, so I'm going to graph uh, the uh, second derivative here. We'll put uh, uh, negative 7 fourths right there. Uh, here's the second derivative. That is 0. I'm going to write IP over it for inflection point. <clears throat> uh, if you pick a number to the right of 7 fourths, perhaps maybe like a 0, and stick that into the second derivative, uh, you get a, um, a positive number, 0 plus 42. So this area is all concave up uh, all the way to, to there. Um, that part of the graph is concave up. If you picked a number less than negative 7 fourths, perhaps it's ne negative 2. Negative 48 plus 42 is negative. So this is concave down. So right to here and then on forever. So this is where you where you switch over from concave up to concave down. So roughly, perhaps we've got something like this. That's where the uh, inflection point is, is uh, where we change our concavity. I'm just making that up, but that's kind of the general gist of what we expect to see. Um, what I want to do now is I'm going to draw the first derivative and second derivative number lines side by side. Um, so uh, let me start a new little segment here. I will do the first derivative second derivative and let's get all the important points labeled um, so seven four, negative seven fourths was important for my inflection point and then negative uh, let me just write these down um, so my inflection point, is negative 7 fourths. My critical points were uh, negative 3 halves and negative 2. I'm going to say or negative 6 fourths and uh, negative 8 fourths. Because everything's kind of close together, I'm just going to write them in fourths right now so it's easier to kind of see what's what's going on. Um, for the first derivative, we're going to have, we'll have negative 8 fourths here. Then we'll have minus 7 fourths right there. And then we'll have minus 6 fourths right there. I'm trying to make these right to scale so they just, they're right on top of each other. 
Um, <clears throat> so for the second derivative, the inflection point, this was zero. And uh, then uh, for the first derivative, uh, the negative six force and a force, these were zero. And now for the second derivative, what we found uh, a moment ago uh, was that if I put in uh, a uh, number to the right of negative seven force, this was a, uh, I'm just gonna kind of say all positive. That was all positive. And then on the left, this was all negative. So that implied this is all concave down. And this is all concave up. Um, so with that in mind, knowing that here at negative seven fourths, that's my cutoff, this, this critical point is in a concave up six uh, segment, which looks like this. And this critical point is in a concave down segment, which looks like this. So that tells me that I believe this to be a max, because maxes go with concave down, and I believe this to be a min. Um, and what we actually found when I did the sign test is I had this was positive, uh, this was negative, this was positive. So the, the, the positive meant I went up and then I went down, which is consistent with a max. And then if this segment is negative, I went down until I got the negative six fourths, negative three halves, and then I went up. That was consistent with a, a min. So um, all that looks promising. Uh, I know where my critical points are. I know that there are maxes and mins. I know that this one's a max, this one's a min. I know where my inflection point is. I'm going to put this on a graph and look at it and make sure everything is uh, what is expected. So we're going to scroll back up for a second. I'm going to type in my function uh, 4x cubed, 21x squared, plus 36x plus 20. Uh, I'm going to just do the regular zoom window to start. See if I can see what I want. Uh, you know, decent. I, I think I need to just move in a little bit here and just squeeze it in on the X because I certainly don't need all this space. So if I kind of make the X max maybe a 2 and then that maybe a minus 3, maybe this will be better. Okay, I'm liking that a little bit better. Um, on the, uh, what's my window? Uh, negative 10 to 10. Maybe I'll just kind of dial that down a little bit. Maybe we'll go negative 6 to 6. See if I can get away with that and still have a... Okay, um, let's, uh, uh, let's zoom in on this just a little bit more. I, I just get kind of particular... Um, so maybe we just needed to go to like, uh, go to one there and on the, on the Y we'll go down to like negative four and up to four. I won't do this all day, but, um, okay. So that's, that's probably good enough. Um, so I'm going to go to trace and first of all, notice there's a little max there. There's a min. And this left side you can see is kind of concave down. And then this right side is concave up. Um, so before I do any, any looking at points, I expected to have concave down on the left part of the graph. So that does seem to be concave down. See that. And then I expected to have concave up. See on the right part of the graph. And that seems to be concave up. If you go to trace, and type in seven force, excuse me, negative seven force, negative seven force. Hit enter. Now try that again. Negative seven force. Hit enter for real. That does appear to be an inflection point where I switch from uh, a concave down to a concave up. I'm changing concavity there. Um, and also, I predicted a max on the left and then on the right. It does look like I have a max on the left. And a min right there on the right. Let's just type those in as well. 
hit trace, type in negative 2. That does appear to be my max. And uh, then negative 3 over 2. That, uh, that does appear to be my min. So I feel pretty good about this graph uh, using the second derivative to find the concavity and uh, identify the maxes and mins. Uh, this is a pretty basic example. It uses just a, a, a polynomial with power rules, so the derivatives are pretty easy. But um, it really illustrates the concepts fairly well. Um, before we go here, I want to show you one more. I want to make one more comment about, about inflection points. This is just a conceptual uh, comment, not, not going to do any math. Um, if you have a curve like that, the inflection point is going to be about there. If you have a curve like that, the inflection point is going to be about there. The reason is the radius of curvature. So the radius of curvature is where you take an invisible point right there and kind of figure out how, how far out do you have to go to, to make that curve. And same thing here, what's the radius of curvature? There's a, a, a mathematical way you calculate that. Um, so with this, when you have a really tight curve, the radius of curvature is really small. And when you have a really wide open curve, probably out here actually, the radius of curvature is really gigantic. Um, so inflection points gravitate towards the um, part of the graph with the smallest radius of curvature. So here, if they're about equal, the inflection point will be about in the middle. Uh, here, when the radius of curvature here is drastically smaller than it is out here, the inflection point will be will gravitate towards that smaller section of the graph. So that's just kind of a a comment that I want to throw at you um, so that you can um, just, just think about that. Um, anyway, that's all for now. This is an introduction to uh, using the second derivative uh, to find um, uh, inflection points and the concavity of a graph.